Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Today we are looking at 3, 4, which is perpendicular lines. Um, as a reminder, we've already talked about perpendicular lines, but a reminder that perpendicular lines are lines that intersect to form right angles. So when I have two lines that intersect, I will have 90 degree angles right here. Okay, a perpendicular bisector of a segment. Okay, if I have a segment, and I have the midpoint, okay? So remember, your midpoint is a bisector of the segment. If I draw a perpendicular, oops, that wasn't very straight, was it? If I draw a perpendicular, <laughs> I can't draw a straight line. A little better. Okay, so if I draw a perpendicular line through that midpoint, okay, this line is the perpendicular bisector of this segment. Okay, so the perpendicular bisector will cut the segment in half, so creating two congruent pieces, and it will be perpendicular to that segment. Okay, um, this next piece here, when we we're looking at the distance from a point to a line, okay, I have a point and a line. Okay, the distance when we talk, or the way we find the distance between this point and this line is we use the perpendicular. Okay, this is going to be the shortest distance. Okay, and again, it is perpendicular to that line, okay? Because remember, there's like that thing, it says the shortest distance between any two points is a straight line. So same thing here, the shortest distance is a line that is going to go right to it, okay? The reason that we do that is because if I was looking at, and please do not write this down, okay? I just want you to kind of look at it. This distance and this distance and this distance and this distance are all different, okay? Depending on the angle from um, the segment to the line, okay? So if I'm looking at the distance from this point to this line, the only way that we can tell um, the length of that, okay, is we want to keep something that is standard to all points and lines, not just something that works in one case. So because the distance has changed, the farther out this angle gets, we always use the perpendicular because it is going to be the shortest distance. So that's our here, the shortest segment from a point to a line is perpendicular, okay? Um, so please keep that in mind as we go here, all right? So let's move forward. Um, so here we go. Some of our theorems for today. We have, if I have two lines intersect and they form congruent angles, that means that those lines are perpendicular. So let's kind of think about that for a second. If these two angles are congruent, I know that because they make a line, they are a linear pair, which means they add to 180. So if I do 180 divided by 2, they are both 90 degrees. All right, I hope that makes sense. So both of these have to be 90, which means that my lines are perpendicular. Okay, our perpendicular transversal theorem, if I have two lines that are parallel, okay, and I have a transversal that is perpendicular to one of them, then I know that it has to be perpendicular to this line as well. Okay, here's why. If this is 90 degrees, this is a corresponding angle to my 90. So it must also be 90. Okay, so my corresponding angles um, postulate tells me that these have to be the same measure. So if one is 90, then the other must be 90 as well, which means they are perpendicular to both of those. Okay, and kind of the converse to that is true. If we have a transversal that is perpendicular to two lines, then these lines have to be parallel. Again, we talked about corresponding angles with this one. Well, our converse is what's happening here. If these are both 90, then my corresponding angles are congruent. So by the converse, my lines are parallel. Okay, so that kind of piggybacks off of what we did yesterday. So here we go. First example. And again, if you have questions on the theorems, please go ahead and write them down. But I want to name the shortest second segment from point P to line AC. So the shortest distance is going to be that perpendicular one. So the shortest segment is segment PB. All right. I want to write and solve an inequality for X. Well, 
if PB is the smallest segment of everything that comes from P, I know it's going to be smaller than PA and it's going to be smaller than PC. That means that PB is less than any other segment. So it's less than PA. So I can say that 5 is less than x plus 3. And we subtract 3 from both sides and get that 2 has to be less than x. Okay, so that is my solution for my inequality. This is me writing the inequality in here. Then we go through and solving it. Okay, so I know that this has to be um, greater than 2 because if it's 2 or less, then it will be shorter or equal to the segment and then that cannot be true. X has to be greater than 2. So sometimes I know we like to write these this way um, with the X first and that's fine. Um, just make sure you switch the sign with it. All right, questions on that, please go ahead and write it down. Okay, so let's look at an example two. Yes, I know it's a proof, so exciting. Um, but let's take a look at it here. So we have that AD and AB are perpendicular. We have BC and DC are perpendicular. And we have that AD and BC are parallel. Okay, so again, making sure you know that the little lines or the little arrows mean parallel and our little boxes here mean our right angle boxes so we know perpendicular. Okay, so let's take a look at kind of what's happening here. If for just a second, okay, and please, again, don't do this to your papers, but just for a second, let's ignore that. I know that this line is perpendicular to this line, all right? I also know that this line and this line are parallel. So that's one of our theorems that we just talked about, that perpendicular transversal theorem, where it says if I have a perpendicular, okay, I got parallel lines, my transversal is perpendicular to one, then it has to be perpendicular to the other. So does that make sense that this, these two lines here are perpendicular and these two lines here are perpendicular, okay? So let me kind of say that one more time. These lines are parallel. If these are perpendicular, then these have to be perpendicular too. Because again, if we go through the long way and talk about if this is 90, then it's corresponding also must be 90, okay? And that would give us those angles congruent. So this has to be 90 as well, all right? Then, if I would look over here, again, just don't do this to your paper, but I'm just going to kind of ignore it for now. Once we know that this is 90, if these are perpendicular here and here, then that means that I know these lines are parallel, okay? Because I can either use same side interiors, because both of these have to be 90, I can use alternate interiors, or I can use, again, that theorem that we just talked about where we have... If two lines are perpendicular to a transversal, then they must be parallel, which is really where we're going to go. All right. So let's take a look at how this is going to work. So I'm given this information here. All right. And notice that I've got another given hiding here. That means we can automatically fill this in with what else we are given. All right. So that's AD perpendicular to AB. So now we have all three pieces of our given. So we're starting out with given that my two lines are parallel and that BC and DC are perpendicular here. Then from here, I'm going to say, okay, so AD is perpendicular to DC. That's this one right here. And again, because we're ignoring what's up top, I have two parallel lines. The transversal is perpendicular to one. It must be perpendicular to the other. That is our perpendicular transversal theorem. Okay, now that I have these are perpendicular, and these are perpendicular, okay, I have two lines that are going to be, and you can write it in if you want, okay, I have two lines that are perpendicular to the same line, so that means that they must be parallel, okay, so um, the, this one doesn't have a name, so you kind of have to write it out a little bit more, so this is kind of how I write it, two lines, and I use a little perpendicular symbol to the same line, um, means that there are two, the two, two lines are parallel, okay? So it's not a really easy thing to write down, but that's kind of where we are. All right, so I know, again, proofs are hard, but go ahead, if you have questions, write it down, and we'll try and go over this a little more in class if needed. 
Okay, so another proof here. Um, and I will have to slide over. Actually, let me just shrink this up just a little bit so that you can see it all in your screen. Ooh, almost too much. There we go. Okay, um, so we're looking at these two lines are parallel. These two lines are perpendicular. And I want to show that these two lines are perpendicular. So it's kind of what we just did, only just a little bit easier. Um, so it's given that our lines are parallel. And so we know that angle ABC is congruent to BDE, okay, by the corresponding angles postulate. Okay, it is also given, okay, well, we have the BC and DE, so we're also given that line AB is perpendicular to line BC. So I know that because they're perpendicular, the measure of the angle is 90 degrees. Okay, so that means that this is 90. Okay, by definition of congruent angles, I know that those angles are equal to each other. So that means that angle BDE is also 90. Okay, so I have here that those angles are congruent. So that means their measures are equal. If ABC is 90, then BDE must also be 90. Okay, and we can use substitution or transitive for that one because we are in equalities. So then, because this is 90 degrees, okay, I know that they are perpendicular by the definition. So I can say that line AB is perpendicular to line DE. Okay, again, I know proofs are hard, but we're just kind of talking through this one. And right now with this, we are proving the transversal theorem, not just using it. Um, so we couldn't use it in this problem because we're trying to prove it. Okay, so again, if we need to, we can go over this more in class. All right, our last example for today is actually looking at oceanography. So here's the deal. We have a sandbar that is parallel to the shore. What happens with rip currents is you get a buildup of water between the sandbar and it basically cuts a hole in the sandbar so that all this water can rush out this way, okay, and rush out straight towards the ocean. We are told that it is going to be perpendicular to the sandbar. That's our water breakthrough. Our rip current is going to be perpendicular to the sandbar. Okay. Um, so the question is, if it's perpendicular to the sandbar, why does it also have to be perpendicular to the shore? Okay. So let me kind of pop back here for a second. Look here. We have, here's the shore and the sandbar. Okay. And my, um, Rip current is perpendicular to the sandbar, so it must also be perpendicular to the shore. That is our perpendicular transversal theorem. Okay, so perpendicular transverse for, yeah, okay, transversal. Sorry, it's hard to spell and type, or spell and talk at the same time. So our perpendicular transversal theorem, because we can use this, because the sandbar is parallel to the shore. Okay, and guys, just a quick like side note here and a little squirrel in our lesson. This is why they tell you at the ocean, if you get caught in a rip current, that you are supposed to swim parallel to the shore. Okay, if you are trying to swim back at the shore, you end up just staying in that rip current and that rip current just keeps on trying to push you out to sea. Whereas if you swim parallel to the rip or parallel to the shore, then you're actually swimming out of the rip current because you're going to swim by a piece of that sandbar that is still built up and it doesn't have that hole through it. Um, so just a little fun fact for today. All right. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and write that down and I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.